Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you, and I'm thank, thankful that you're uh, watching today and that you're uh, connecting with me today. Uh, we're going to start Acts chapter 9 today. We're going to start a new chapter. We finished up Acts chapter 8 yesterday and um, talking about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch being baptized and Philip being teleported into another town such a great story in the bible and today we're going to uh, begin acts chapter 9 which is very familiar to most people who've been around the church very for very long because this is the first of three times that the apostle paul is going to tell his testimony of how he came to know christ and and um, his experience on the damascus road so i want to i want to just read this to you in verse one it says meanwhile Saul, who will become the Apostle Paul, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord, the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there belonging to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now, this is an interesting story and, and I think helpful to understand that Saul was a, was a Pharisee and, and he was an aspiring Pharisee. Like he, was, he was on uh, a fast track. He he was um, he he was very dedicated to what he was doing and to what he believed, and he thought that he was serving the Lord. We we see that in other places in the Bible where he talks about that that he thought he was doing the right thing, but ultimately uh, he was confronted by Jesus, and Jesus uh, squared him away and and told him, "No, this is not." what you're doing because you are persecuting me uh, i love the line where jesus says these words saul saul why are you why do you persecute me because when you persecute the church jesus takes it personally jesus understands and he be, he has demonstrated that we are his body he is our head and and we are his body and if someone persecutes your body your head does not appreciate it. And, and, and I believe that's how connected we are with Christ, is that when the body is persecuted, the head does not appreciate it. And so Jesus confronts Saul here on this road to Damascus as he's going with orders from the high priest with authority to arrest those who are operating in this thing called The Way, capital W, The Way, because they didn't know what to call it, but it was a way of living that they had seen uh, people were living in a in were just living differently, and, and so it hadn't really been called Christianity yet. We'll get to that soon, but um, it, it's called the the way. Are you living the way? And it's it's such an important, interesting question. I believe. In verse five, it says, "Who are you, Lord?" Saul said, "I am Jesus." whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. You see, sometimes I think we get this idea that everything with God is just optional, that, that we can just do whatever we want and, and, and it really, you know, it doesn't really matter because we ultimately are in charge, that we have um, free will. I believe we have free will, but I also believe that God has a destiny for us. I also believe that God has will. And, and, and I believe that those two things work together and sometimes they collide. Sometimes they come against each other. And, and Paul here is not asked to go and do something. He's told what he's going to do. He, he, is, uh, he is commanded. And so Jesus here confronts him and says, now get up and go, and, and you will be told what you must do. In verse 7, it says, The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he, he, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. 
For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. For three days he was blind. Isn't that interesting? That three-day period of, of incubation, if you will. That, that same three-day period of Christ in the tomb and, and then resurrected in that, that, that place of darkness and then brought into the light. It, it's, it's very interesting how the Bible shows up that way over and over again. But So Saul sees the light. He hears the voice. The people with him, they they can hear. They they can. Uh, they're standing there speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Only Saul saw Jesus. And then he got up from the ground. He's led blindly into Damascus to await his orders, and during that time, he doesn't eat or drink anything. Because he is freaked out. <laughs> and that is uh, it's understandably, right? Understandably, he is freaked out because he has just come face to face with the living God. And his life is about to change in a radical way. And here's the, here's the incredible thing. Is that because his life changed in a radical way, now we have what he wrote we have his testimony we have his teaching we have his revelation that he captured for us in the letters of the new testament so that we can understand the theology of god we can understand the ways of christianity through this man who jesus confronted the enemy of the church turned into its greatest apostle one of the greatest apostles so that we could have the revelation that God ultimately would give to him because he was willing. Are you willing is a question. Are you willing to be used by God? Are you willing to lay down your life so that you can, so that God can take it up and, and you can be used in a way that can change? I mean, how many people have been changed through the writings of the Apostle Paul? Billions and billions. It's hard to, it would be impossible to even count or quantify. But wow, what a life, what a legacy. So I just want to pray for us. Lord, we just give you our lives to be used by you, that, that you would be able to, to, to step into our lives and, and not have to confront us from, for, for trying to persecute you or, or, or anything, but, but to, to use us to make a difference for your name, for your legacy, for who you are, and for the kingdom. And we thank you for that incredible opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.